Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin of Collecting Japanese Prints. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where every Wednesday we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. Uh, today's Woodblock Wednesday is going to be sort of the sneak preview to a talk I'm presenting here on Facebook Live on Saturday, November 7th. Um, and it's going to be at 2 p.m. Chicago which Chicago time, which is 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, that, so that's 3 o'clock New York and noon, um, basically California time. Um, and today I'm presenting this um, sort of sneak preview uh, for Saturday's talk. Um, I just want to take a breath. Um, we've had a really interesting, some people might call it traumatic, uh, uh, 24-hour period here in the United States over the elections. They're not quite settled yet, but we might be able to take a deep breath of relief towards the end of today, or maybe not, who knows. But uh, one of the things that I think um, I always find of comfort is art. And regardless of what the results are, or what fears or anxieties um, one might have of the coming future, of course, there's always hope and there's always positivity um, around the corner as well. And art can provide us with a sense of relief and escape. Um, and so uh, something, um, at least for me, that's something I like to uh, do to keep my mind off things. And so maybe for a, a moment or two, we could get our minds off the elections and um, turn to something that I think is really special. <coughs> Excuse me. And so today... I'm going to present four different states of the poet Hagiwara by Koshiro Onchi. As many uh, of you know, Onchi is one of my favorite artists, and he's arguably the 20th century's most important printmaker that Japan produced. Um, he was uh, an early artist that was expressing himself in really dynamic, uh, innovative ways. For example, in 1915, he is credited with producing the first work of abstraction in Japan, and he made a, a, an abstract print um, in for his poetry and print magazine, Tsukuhae. So Onchi has, was always very forward uh, thinking. He was um, an amazing print artist who can work both um, in abstraction as well as representational modes of printmaking. And in today's uh, presentation, I'm going to show one of his masterpieces that is representational. Um, some have called it... Um, sort of a, in this portrait, is almost like a Rembrandt po portrait of Japan um, in the sense that he really is able to show a lot of emotion and the characteristic of the artist uh, or of the portrait um, subject. And so um, well, without further ado, let's have a look at the table and I could, we could discuss it further. So what I've done is laid out four prints on my table here. And I want to say, this is going to be the only place in the world that you will be able to encounter all four. And I'm rather uh, proud of this. Um, and so again, just to give you a little bit of information, this print is by Koshiro Onchi. It was done in 1943. The, the print is titled Por Portrait of the Poet Hagiwara Sakutaro. The, 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 the subject of this print actually died in 1942. And this is a posthumous portrait, meaning that Onshi produced the portrait after the death of this, um, this poet or this artist. And, you know, I just want to sort of pan out a little bit so you could see the entire work. And then I'm going to zoom in and we could discuss it. Onchi's portrait depicts uh, this poet in a state of, of I mean, he, he, almost melancholy, I want to call it. He was very depressed um, in the years leading up to the war. He was one of the, one of Japan's first surrealist poets and produced a lot of really wonderful, innovative 
uh, poetry. Um, he, he, in terms of literature, he was certainly on on the avant garde um, in in literature, and so his 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 poetry really connected to the work of Onchi, and they actually became friends in about nineteen twelve or so when Onchi started working with Tanaka Fujimori and uh, Tanaka. I mean Tanaka Kyokichi and uh, Fujimori. And so uh, the Sukuhai magazine came out uh, about 1914. And around this time, uh, the, those, those artists worked with Hagiwara. And in fact, um, I actually have one of the books that Hagiwara produced. Um, this one's called Howling at the Moon. And um, I think this was done around the same time, um, about 1914 or so. I don't know if there's a there's a date on here now. Um, I could look carefully and maybe look for a date, but I I could just point out that these are designs by Tanaka and and also maybe by Fujimori um, and Onchi. So their 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 work was featured in one of the early issues of Halloween at the Moon. It's been republished over and over and over again, and this is a recent um, printing of the of the book. With uh, and it's completely translated in English. I should mention. So, if you're interested in reading these surrealist poems in translation, I highly recommend looking up uh, the book. Uh, it's it's actually quite good. And in terms of the the portrait, this is the 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 poet who produced the the poetry, and the poetry is full of melancholy. It it is very much um, connected to what was happening in Japan at the time. This uh, Hagiwara was a very sensitive soul and and saw the coming dark years of the war. Um, and basically, he was an alcoholic and he drank himself to death and he died in 1943. And Onchi was so moved by his death that he produced this print again in um in actually the poet died in 42 and and Onchi produced this print in 1943. And you could see how ex expressive the the faces uh Onchi-esque printing technique of this wet um, sort of style of printing, you could you could almost make out kind of almost like sweat coming down uh, the face. It's it's really expressive. The colors um, sort of shift and move in shadows. It, it's a really it's a it's it's a one of those portraits that you could look at for hours and see different things. And I see a sadness, a despair. A, a also a resilience, but I also see melancholy. And at the at the end, um, the the artist did take his own life, or he passed away from from basically wanting to check out. And so you you, you see this weathered face that's experienced all of these darker emotions um, that that you know were, were basically conjured by the dark times that were sort of uh, they were occurring in 1942, 1943 and of course the warriors. Um, and so yeah, this is a really interesting portrait because it's psychological. It's emotional. Um, the the printing really adds an amazing amount of psychology and emotion. Um, it's very expressive. And with any Onshi print, I want to point out that it's not about registration or how perfect or precise it is. A, a true Onshi print should never look clean. You could see these the splatter. Um, you know, in the margins, and it should have the hand of the artist in the sense that you can almost see him at work. You could see that there's pigment um, that's around the, the the face that almost creates kind of like a halo, and um, that's very onchi esque. That's what you want to see. That's what a onchi self printed work would look like. The interesting thing about this impression is that it it was. Here, let me see if I could do this with one hand. And you can see how expressive the, the, 
the reverse as well. Um, you know, it, it's really wonderful to see the verso of prints because you could kind of see the, the pigment filtering through and see how expressive that is. Uh, but this in particular impression has a, cert well, not a certificate, but it has a sort of a notation by Sakino, and it's signed and sealed by Sakino, indicating that it was indeed printed by the master, by Onchi, which is kind of neat. And I'll tell you why in a moment why that's important. But again, um, it's it's interesting to be able to see how how beautiful and how how potent um, of a, a portrait this is when it is in fact an Onchi printed work. I should uh, also mention that Onchi printed one print, one impression in 1943 that went to the American collector uh, William Harnett. And then after the war, Onchi was asked um, to produce more impressions. Uh, there were a lot of Americans that were in Japan for the occupation, and they were all really interested in Onchi's work. And so he, pr he produced the current estimates about maybe 10 to 12 impressions um, after the war. Now, I, I personally have come across maybe a half dozen in museums and in, in private collections. Um, so this in, in particular design is quite rare, but it is known in multiple states where there are some Onchi prints where there's just one of it. So I'm, I'm glad that the, they con convinced Onchi to produce more. This impression was done after the war for an American, I'm, I'm certain, or, or, or a foreigner. And the Sakino um, signature on the reverse uh, authenticating it was probably, um, it was probably requested by a collector after Onchi died. And the reason for that is this print was so popular that Sakino was asked by Onchi to produce 50 impressions. And, uh, you, you know, Onchi had done as many as he could possibly do. Um, he hated reprinting work. He, he saw his prints as monoprints. Even if they were printed in, in multiple impressions, they all have a very different uh, quality and printing effects. And so they're, they're all very different. But, he, you know, he was tired of producing it. 12 was qu quite a bit for him. And so his... So I wouldn't, I hesitate to call Sakino his student. He was kind of a, a devotee and he was a follower of Onchi's work. He was certainly working in his studio and was learning from the master. But, but Sakino had his, diff, his, 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 excuse me, he had his own separate uh, approach to printmaking. And, and I'll discuss that more this Saturday um, uh, on, at, during my talk. But um, what I wa want to say today is that this particular impression was commissioned essentially by Onchi, and asked, he asked Sakino, please make 50 to sort of quell the demand by the Americans and other foreigners interested in this portrait. And you could see Sakino did an adequate job. Actually, it's pretty expressive. And when I look at it and, you know, closer, you could see that he, he did a very good job. It has kind of a, a psychological and emotional quality to it, but it, it lacks this oomph. This, this, there's just something about that it is so potent and strong and, 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 and beautifully dark. And I mean, again, it's just potent. And here, it's a very good portrait. And the more you study it, the more you could appreciate it. But when you lay it side by side with the original, you could see that there is, there, there, it's very different. And there's something missing in some ways. Um, and the other thing I, I'm going to point out, here's the verso. So you see the, the, the portrait in reverse. And for Sakino impressions, by and large, what you see is this stamp on the back. And of course, it indicates it was printed by Sakino. You don't always see them. The, uh, I would say about 90% of Sakino impressions have this. But there are some Sakino impressions that are known that do not have this. And when you don't come across the earlier Onchi printing and you're not, you know, you're not um, uh, 
you're not lucky enough to own it or, or come across it, you won't be able to identify a Sakino printing as, as, as easily. And so this is why uh, Sakino indicated the, that it, this impression was printed by Enji on the back uh, because it, it needed it because there were 50 impressions of this floating around and people were becoming used to this type of printing. And of course, the master's printing was something that was rarely encountered. Now, as the story goes, Sakino actually sold all of these. They, they, they sold out. They were, it was a smashing success. And of course, because of the portrait is just so compelling um, and riveting. It is, it's become an icon of 20th century prints uh, by the Sosaku Hanga school. And so um, some more, more of a demand was there. And after Sakino's impression, which were done during Onchi's lifetime, um, another edition of 50 were made. And these were done by Harai. He was an artist, but mostly a printer. And he worked with Onchi, he worked with Sakino, he worked with a lot of uh, different artists printing um, prints uh, for them. And, um, and so in this impression, this was done after Onchi's death. So in some ways, it was a memorial edition. He did it in 50 impressions um, like uh, Sakino. Now, there, there is some information that's incorrect at least to my opinion, that there are only 20 or 25 impressions. As far as I know, Sakino made 50. And, um, and, and Harai made 50. And though they're not numbered, you could see that on the back, you, you have a very, very similar label to the Sakino printed one. But here it says Memorial Edition published by Harai. And the title in pencil, Portrait of a Poet, which was the shortened um, version of the title, Portrait of a Poet, um, Hagiwara. So it, that's really interesting. You could see how different the printing is on this impression versus Sakino's impression versus the or original impression by the master, Onchi. Very, very interesting how different they are. This, again, was done in 1944-45. This was done around the same time. This was done post-1955, after Onchi died. And the interesting thing is that in the 80s, Onchi's son, Kunio, Kunio Onchi, was was trying to sort of revive some of his father's work, partly because museums kept asking the Onchi family, we don't have any Onchis, we'd like to showcase your father's work. And so the, the family had the original blocks and they commissioned another edition of the print. This was done in the 1980s. And um, Cuneo printed some, he also had printers, and I'm not sure if Kunio Onchi printed this impression. He probably did, but he may have had help. I'm not quite certain on that. But what's interesting is that Kunio's impressions were not as focused about replicating the image as faithfully as they could, but more about replicating the emotion. And so her eyes is a... Is a this Harai impression is an adequate representation of the image. This one is a, a bit more psychological. And of course, this one has psychology and emotion. And I think Kunio's impression, in some ways, is closer to his father's printing in terms of the looseness and the sort of maybe the, the emotion or psychological component of the print. Now, this to me doesn't read as is dark or as darkly emotional, but it does read more psychological than the, the Harai impression and even possibly the Sakino impression. And so, you know, I want to show everyone that, of course, there is another label. And here it's 
it, they, they have a title, it's in Japanese, and they indicate it's by Koshiro Onchi because he originally created the blocks. Uh, but of course here it's printed by, and then they indicate it was, it was by the, by, by her, by, by uh, Kunio Onchi. And the, here is very important. This is printing impression number four of 10. So basically there were only 10 impressions of this print done in the 1980s. And most of them actually ended up in institutions in Japan because most institutions in Japan didn't have Onchi's. A l most of Onchi's work, particularly a lot of his masterpieces, left Japan with the occupational forces there. Um, there were a lot of American collectors. Michener was one of them, Oliver Statler, William Harnett, as well as others. They, they also helped um, sort of broker deals with other collectors who came along as well. And so a lot of Onchi's work ended up in the U.S., particularly in Chicago. Chicago is very lucky to have Oliver Statler as a resident, and we ended up getting a lot of his Onchi's, um, um, either his prints or the prints that he brokered uh, the sales to uh, with other collectors who ended up donating those prints to the Art Institute. And so it's great to, to live in Chicago because I, ha I, I have access to them. I get to see them on occasion um, when they show them. And, um, you know, Chicago has a very rich tradition it, with Sosaku Hanga. There are quite a few important Sosaku Hanga collectors in Chicago. So I'm very fortunate to be among those. And, um, and so I want to back up and I could just sort of pan out Every single print is done in the same size, same format with the original blocks. The papers, of course, vary. This early post-war paper is very soft. It's less absorbent than the other prints. And what you get is you get the pigment. Um, it's, it rests most more on the surface of the paper. It does go through, of course. But you, you could, you could kind of see pigment on the surface of the paper in a way that it's almost like a painting, which is really neat. That's a wonderful effect um, that you see quite a bit during the post-war era of uh, Sosaku Hanga. And of course, I'll, I'll touch upon that later um, on Saturday. But at the end of the day, I, I just wanted to point out how radically different each impression is. So what I'm going to do is, I'll start at the other end here. This is the print by Kunio Onchi. And this was done in the, in the mid to late 80s. And as I said, he, he did this print, he did this printing because he wanted, uh, to, he wanted to reproduce some of his father's most important prints in order to have them, um, have them in, in Japanese museums. Most of his father's work, um, as I mentioned, uh, left Japan. And so in order to showcase his father's work, he needed to reproduce it so museums could then uh, show it. And so I would say out of the addition of 10, the vast majority ended up in, 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 in Japanese museums. So I think there's maybe three impressions in the U.S. of this. And so, but this is the only place here with you all, with me, of course, here, um, that I could share all four, which is really, really neat. Now, this is a Harai impression, as I mentioned. This was done after Onchi's death in 1955. And, you know, everyone agrees that it's a very good impression. It's an adequate uh, sort of representation of the image. If you've never seen Onchi's print, you'd be very, very happy with this print. I mean, I, I think the printing is quite nice. And in fact, you even get a sense of the, the expressive quality that you see on Onchi's prints. I think um, for Harai, this is actually more of a messier style than he's actually used to working in. He, I think, kind of pushed himself a little bit and, and um, you know, showed how, how kind of wet and expressive he could, he could take his printing, which is, 
It's just okay. I mean, it's pretty expressive as things go, um, but not not anywhere near the the master, of course. And so this is Sakino's impression. I'd like this impression quite a bit. And in terms of impressions of this design, I have seen some Sakino impressions. A couple are at the Art Institute that are very hard to differentiate from an Onchi impression. Sakino did have the talent to be able to reproduce it. Now, one of the reasons why I don't think he wanted to do it full force on, on his edition is, number one, he had to make 50 of them. And this type of printing is actually much harder to achieve than, than this, print, this type of printing because you, 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 the registration is correct and all the blocks are inked a certain way. It's more of a mechanical thing. You, you just do one, you could do the other, you could do the other one. Where the Onchi printing, it's, it's really, like I, the way that Onchi printed it, it was a mono print. And he wasn't really, he didn't really care about them looking consistent or the same. He wanted each individual work to reflect his own mental or emotional state of mind when he was making the print. Sakino wasn't interested in doing that. He, he was interested in making a, an excellent impression, but one that, you know, achieved the effect of reproducing the image, but having something there. And I think he does that. I think he does that. And there's a couple of prints that I think, I think Sakino was sort of working almost in a trial format. And there's a couple that exist that, you know, at the Art Institute that looked very much like Onchi's. And so this is also the reason why there was that um, sort of um, statement by Sakino, and I'll, I'll, I'll show this again. This statement basically says, uh, Onchi, Koshiro Onchi, um, you know, self-printed, and then there's, um, there's Sakino's signature and seal. So, you know, at, at, the at some point, in this print history, the collector wanted uh, assurances that it was in fact printed by Onchi and not by Sakino. And that should tell you that there are some Sakinos floating around that are very, very good and almost uh, achieve an Onchi-esque way. So uh, here, I'll flip this over one last time so you could see the, the, the stamp. So all, all three of them, that are post um, Onchi impression have a stamp on the back that indicates who the printer is, but that's not always the case. This um, Sakino, uh, uh, this type of uh, this state in the four, I've seen some that has no stamp. So just because it doesn't have a stamp doesn't mean it's by Onchi. You really have to look at the printing and kind of decide based on the printing style and also the paper. So, you know, that, that's also important. So I want to back up so that all of you can see. I mean, it's very challenging to... Here, let me see if I could back up. To see all of the, the prints on the table. It's really neat to have all four in one place. And as I said, it, this is the only place in the world where you could see each different state of this design. Now I'm gonna zoom in on each print one last time so you could see the differences.
I'll, I'll end our, our, our conversation about this, this, this portrait of Hagiwara by an observation that Helen Merritt made. I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with her, but you know, I'll throw it out to all of you to, to consider. She considered, she indicated the Onchi printed version of this portrait as poetry. And she considered the Sakino impression as prose. And uh, at the time of her writing, this was the only, uh, ver the last version of it. It was before the Cuneo impression, and she called the Harai impression a scholarly footnote. You know, and I think that's, uh, <laughs> there's some truth in some of these descriptions, but I, I think the Harai, um, and not all Harai impressions are created the same, actually. This one's a pretty good one. Um, and I have another one um, that will go up on my website uh, soon. And that one's also very, very good. I, I'm blessed to be able to find them. Um, but there are some Harais that look kind of stale. And this one and the other one I have are actually a little bit more lively. So maybe uh, Helen Merritt had seen one of those impressions with that were what, that was a bit lifeless. And I'm also, you know, curious what other people think about the last one. If this was a scholarly footnote, I wonder what Merritt would say about the Cunio printed Onchi version. So uh, it's, it, that's a fascinating um, sort of take on this. Uh, Helen Merritt is no longer with us. She passed away Oh, I don't know, about 10, 15 years ago. And she was one of the main scholars of 20th century Japanese prints, particularly Sosaku Hanga. So before we end, I just want to remind everyone that my talk uh, uh, for Saturday, it's going to be an hour long conversation. It's going to be kind of a, like a, a seminar online here on Facebook Live. And the conversation is titled Linked Verse, Koshiro Onchi and His Circle of Print Artists. And again, it's on Saturday at 2 p.m. Chicago time. I really hope all of you can join us in the conversation. Well, thank you very much for joining me I, on another installment of Woodblock Wednesday. I'm, besides uh, presenting this um, seminar on Saturday, I am really working hard on my next exhibition. Um, I keep talking about it, and yet it has not yet made its way up online. And that's because I kept getting really great consignments and uh, other things kept sort of getting in, in the way. But I can guarantee the exhibition will be up late next week. And, of course, we'll have a conversation about that next week on Woodblock Wednesday. Um, so I hope all of you uh, can uh, join me this Saturday and also have a, uh, an eye out for my next exhibition update, which will go up ne next week on my website, collectingjapaneseprints.com. So thanks for joining me, and we'll see you very soon, hopefully on Saturday. Bye.